Hello and welcome to the Friday night edition to of Animal World Live and we're very excited to share with you one of our favorite places in the world tonight on Animal World Live the Kruger National Park. Uh -huh. Welcome, it is awesome to have you here on this beautiful, cold Friday evening in the low felt of South Africa. Fortunately, I've got my fire and my big jacket and the fire is warming my feet so I don't have to wear my absolutely hated closed shoes. Let's see who we've got with us. Hello, Daniel, Annie, Bush Baby, Jordan, Mars, Boo, Linda, TJS Widget, TD Kid One, Dove, Janet, Vicky, Kalena, uh, Donna, Sami John, Julie, welcome, welcome, and I'm sure I've missed a few people, but it's great to have you here uh, with us live in the low felt of South Africa. And of course, today we're going to be talking about the Kruger National Park, one of the most amazing national parks in the world, and uh, we'll delve into that a little bit more later. But for now, we'll get on, and oh, yeah, I've pushed wrong things again, always. Um, and of course, uh, we have our catch-ups from our live bush cams. Okay, so on the live bush cams, we've had a quite a busy, busy week with quite a lot of different species showing up. And as it gets drier, those live bush cams are going to get busier and busier. And we're very excited for that. So the first visitors we had to Seskunt was the jackal pair and I actually have heard them calling from that area now so it looks like they've established in that area which is really great so hopefully we're going to be seeing quite a lot more of the black back jackals on the Seskunt cam and we have seen them on Borskamp as well before but it looks like they're definitely getting nice and relaxed around the Seskunt area oh thank you boo hello applehead hello Betty Hello, Snack Attack. Um, yeah, so we've got a few more people joining. Great to have you here. Rosalind, hello. Um, I saw someone was uh, mentioning they're having a bit of a problem with Teespring. We will look into that uh, to make sure you do get our merch. Um, we will get in contact with them. Um, and then, of course, um, one of the most important little animals when you're out walking in the bush, and you mostly see them on top of other animals we caught on Criticam just coming for a drink. And there we go, a little family of red bulled oxpeckers. And you can see the juveniles on the right don't quite have their oh, and that what is it? Slender or dwarf. That's a slender mongoose. Um, a slender mongoose also came, but uh, so we've Criticam's been quite busy and we're back with the oxpeckers. They probably would have taken off as that slender arrived, uh, so quite nice to have them. And uh, of course there's giraffe and wildebeest and zebra and all sorts here and the oxpeckers are keeping them clean. Now as I said they're important that bird when you're walking in the bush because they often denote the presence of something bigger, particularly giraffe, buffalo and if you are in an area where that is full of buffalo and giraffe and rhinos of course you hear the oxpeckers calling it's quite a good indicator that you need to be aware that there might be a big animal there and of course that's not a problem for giraffe uh, and not so much a problem for rhino but if there's an old buffalo bull hanging about you better be careful now the slender mongooses have been coming quite regularly and that's great to see because they are an animal that is not seen too often and even when you do see them out on drive they tend to dash away at the rate of knots so very very cool to catch up with slender mongooses and of The mongoose. I'm back. Sorry, it seems like we're having a few tech in, it, it, tech issues this evening. VM is on it. Um, so we're back. Um, and of course, and of course, what else 
comes to visit is our nocturnal creatures which is absolutely amazing and uh, I do love Janet's and we're very lucky to get Janet's visiting us as frequently as they do on the on the on the Criticam so uh, we've had the Janet's and again I've, I'm giving up testing you guys uh, because you know the difference between small spotted and large spotted Janet uh, quite easily now and uh, very nice to see a Janet slaking its thirst uh, on on the Criticam so that's always awesome oh thank you very much Nunya hello everyone oh we've got a few people joining late Joel um, Wendy H in Alberton in South Africa welcome Wendy uh, thank you Nunya Michael Fleetwood um, great to have you guys Annie uh, always good to have you here now sometimes we get creatures that are not of the wild ilk and uh, on my way back from my morning walk the other day I decided to take a shortcut through the bush and uh, I obviously when I go for my morning walks I generally have a companion who's keeping me company on the morning walks and that is none other than Chloa and uh, it was quite a long walk that morning so she was quite thirsty so she decided to utilize the Criticam pan uh, for a quick drink thank you boo hello Farid um, and uh, and uh, one of the most common but definitely most cute little creatures out there and I'm not talking about Chloa of course I'm talking about our bush squirrels so we get them quite often and they do come to the pan and around the trees here they try to avoid Chloa when we hear them alarming in the garden it's generally at Chloa but they are quite safe out there uh, Chloa is kept in uh, to keep the animals safe and her actually so very very cool uh, to have the squirrels and whatnot joining us uh, joining us so we're going to move away from Criticam now uh, out into the Reetsprate Reserve where some of our favorite big cats have been visiting the live cams uh, the male lions have been seen quite frequently on at Borskamp and uh, it's really always good to catch up with them so great to have them there and uh, it was always nice to see there and they've been coming quite early in the morning uh, just before sunrise and we think they might have had a kill close by because two days in a row they sort of arrived just before sunrise for a drink so very cool to catch up with them the the three big boys of the Reetsprate Reserve now the male lions are not the only males that have been utilizing a boss camp and MP decided to make an appearance uh, which is great because we actually haven't seen him in a while uh, we've been quite busy on lots of things so we haven't been out as much as we would like uh, but always great to have MP um, coming to visit and uh, we haven't actually seen my bye bye on any of the live camps for a while but I'm pretty sure she's hanging out in the western reaches of the Reedsprate where there's quite a lot of water from that late rain we had uh, in the, the dry rivers there and uh, there we don't unfortunately don't have any cameras in that area yet of course yet um, <laughs> thank you yes Janet my hair is getting long uh, hair cutting services are not issues uh vim and craig are working on it and um, we're just going to try something here just bear with us for a second okay i'm going to carry on carry on i'm carrying on um and of course back at sescant we've also been treated to what we got used to at sescant is it's it's lots of different animals lots of different animals that come and join in at a sescant so we've had uh, some giraffe and warthog uh, so yeah always great to catch up with them as well now that we are done with our live cams i'm going to take a sip ah, delicious and get ready to delve into one of our favorite parts of the world and of course that is the magnificent Kruger National Park. Now we're going to focus on the National Park itself tonight not on the associated private reserves and the larger Transfrontier Park so we're going 
we're going to focus specifically on the Kruger National Park. Now, VM and myself have spent many hours of pure joy in the Kruger, and we've got a little taste of what VM's camera has captured in the Kruger over his years of going to Kruger. Welcome back, and uh, isn't that amazing? Now, all that footage captured by VM was just on holidays, and it's not like going out to film specifically. So we are very lucky to have VM. I saw, saw some comments about that. Um, Dov, it is not a topi. It is a sesame. It's a relative of the topi, but occurs in southern Africa. They are actually quite rare to see in Kruger, and, and it's right on the edge of their range. Um, yes, beautiful tusks and uh, doggies. Now, doggies are quite important in tonight's conversation, and I'm going to get to that a little bit later. But first, we're going to go through some facts, and then we're going to actually play a little game with some of you guys here. So, can anyone tell me when the Kruger Park was first proclaimed? So, I'll give you a hint. It was in the 1800s, but which of exact date of the 1800s so go ahead um, see if any of you can tell me when was the Kruger Park proclaimed so it was proclaimed far before um, it was it was thought about far before it was actually proclaimed about 12 years before it was actually proclaimed and it was formed around the Sabi game reserve originally which was much much smaller and that is the area around 
Skakuza. Now, Skakuza uh, is the Shanghai name for the red collared widow bird. And it is also the nickname for the park's first warden, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stevenson Hamilton. Now, if you haven't read his book, I suggest you do. Um, there are copies available online. Um, oh, 1843? No, a little bit later, I'm afraid. Um, but so James Stevenson Hamilton um, was the first warden, and his Shanghai nickname was Kukuza. And uh, that is the red collared widow bird, which is quite, a, it's a black bird. It looks like it's wearing all its fancy clothes during the summer breeding months. And uh, the reason he was nicknamed that by the Shanghai people was because whenever there was a dignitary or someone arriving, he, he used to get out all his military regalia and he had a, the tails on his suit. And so they decided it looked like the tails on the Skukuza bird. 1886, we're getting closer, but not quite, TD Kid 1. Oh wait there, Mims. 1898, that is spot on. Um, very, very, very spot on. Well done, Mims. That is great. So, and uh, eventually over the years, the Kruger has expanded um, to incorporate bigger areas. Now, this is something that I'm sure quite a lot of you know, but if you don't, it is quite shocking. But the first wardens and, and, and rangers in the Kruger used to shoot leopard, lion, hyena, uh, wild dog, cheetah on sight. And that was to protect them, or to protect the impala, zebra, wildebeest and other herbivores from the evil carnivores. So it is amazing how in a relatively short time, if you think about 1898, uh, 120 odd years ago, that human thinking and whatnot has changed where we actually need to conserve the whole ecosystem rather than just one part of it so isn't that absolutely amazing there we go mary you are spot on indeed it was because of his uniform um chris yes these it is a shuka on the table and i have another shuka over my chair it was james would call um a tablecloth it is not a tablecloth it is far 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 better than a tablecloth it is traditional Maasai dress so in May 9 tech issues I'm back, I'm back. I was just sending you a message. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll be back shortly. Um, sorry about that, everyone, but we are back. Um, we are trialing a new camera tonight, and um, it was working perfectly before, I promise. Uh, but yeah, we will be very, very, very careful um, on it now. I'm just, I think it's a new camera that's giving us a bit of grief. Um, So in 1926, I was saying the National Parks Act was enabled and it joined the then Shinguezi Game Reserve and the, the, and the Sabi Game Reserve forming what is now the core of the Kruger National Park. Now, of course, it, it runs from the far south in the Crocodile River right up to the north in, in the Limpopo River. Uh, the first motorists entered the National Park in 1927 and they paid the fee of a single pound to enter the national uh, enter the park and a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that the, the Kruger National Park and the whole area was quite important from a cultural point of view as well um, and there are over 254 almost 254 sorry known cultural heritage sites and over 130 
uh, traditional art or rock painting sites left by the sand. Thank you, Mary. Um, so yes, yeah, so very, 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 very cool. And um, there are, of course, the very important archaeological sites of uh, well, the one only one I've or well, the one I've been to, Tulamela, which is up in the north, which was part of the great Mapungubwe complex, and we're trading with. Uh, uh, the east coast of Africa and Arabia and even possibly getting stuff as far as India well before uh, the Europeans ever discovered Africa. <laughs> Thank you Mary, uh, <laughs> won't get rid of us um, that easily. Okay, now now the Kruger National Park by itself is one of the largest reserves in the world. Uh, of course, it is even bigger if you encompass the greater Kruger National Park, which is and the Trans Frontier Park, which includes Zimbabwe and uh, Mozambique. But the Kruger National Park itself, just the national park, uh, is around 19,485 square kilometers. And for those of you who don't know kilometers, I've even made a little note here in pounds. It is 7,523 square miles. And uh, it is got a 360 kilometer eastern border and that's 220 miles um, from north to south and it's on average 65 kilometers or 40 miles wide from east to west okay so I would like you guys to feed through some questions um, and uh, Think about your questions. Do you have any questions of Kruger? Now, I was lucky enough to live inside the Kruger National Park for just over two years uh, in the Singita Labombo concession, which is in the center of the Kruger, uh, which is around the basalt plains. Uh, so it's mostly open knobthorn savanna with very, very good grasslands. Uh, oh, Shamsan, I'll get to your question in a second. And uh, it is well known for its high density of predators, particularly lions and hyenas. Um, Shamsung, yes, you can hire a guide to drive you around the Kruger. Well, one of the special things about the Kruger, if you feel confident enough, you can drive yourself around. And uh, yes, so there's, and you'll be seeing there's some maps coming up and some old pictures of the park as well. And, and the first tourists to come in there. Jordan, do I think the carrying capacity of the roads has been reached? Not at all. Uh, there are, you, you are only 2% of the Kruger National Park is visible from the tourist roads. So most of the park is for the animals. And uh, there are massive areas uh, where no tourists ever go. And sometimes you can go on the, the backpack or walking trails, the extended walking trails. And uh, that that is that is sometimes those animals i'm actually pretty sure there's a lot of animals in kruger that go through their whole lives without ever seeing a human being and that's quite special now the one thing about kruger national park and mo and most people don't know this that they have a mandate from government to maintain the highest amount of biodiversity possible and of course with roads and things like that and, and camps and humans your biodiversity is possibly affected and go down and can go down that is why the, there are so massive massive areas that are completely uninhabited people barely venture into them uh, apart from the rangers and the anti-poaching patrols Uh, Kathy, you cannot drive the full circumference. Um, you can drive the roads in and out. Uh, the whole eastern border is completely off limits uh, at the moment uh, and was beforehand. Uh, there are a couple of border posts where you can go through into Mozambique, but of course that is the, fourth, uh, the front line of the, the rhino poaching uh, war at the moment. So that is actually the, the eastern border of the Kruger is now a military zone and there are military camps there to protect our rhinos. Mary, yes, indeed, the roads are very good. Um, Shamsung, you cannot horseback in the Kruger National Park. That is a no-no. Um, so the only the, the ways you can enjoy in the Kruger National Park, you can go camping. You can take your tent, and there are designated campsites at at at, at the Kruger National Park camps. There are also little rondavels or little round huts where you can stay, um, as well as private Kruger camps, which are a little bit more luxurious where you can stay. 
there's of course the Kruger National Park um, uh, sorry the the private concessions within the Kruger National Park which are a, a lot more expensive and high-end and uh, Singita, Lion Sands, uh, Rhino Walking Safaris, uh, Hamilton's so th there are quite an, a few concessions within the park um, that you can go on a game drive in an open vehicle with a guide and a tracker as you would in the Sabi Sands and now you might see some of my favorite photos from Kruger and that this is one of the amazing things is you are able to get out of the car at certain points and you'll see a few photos of elephants and um, you'll see a picture of a person looking down on the elephants and that was at one of my favorite spots that's called Bobian's Kral and that's actually not too far from us. Um, Dov, excellent question. Um, the, the, the western side of the Kruger is fenced uh, where it meets the communities and uh, the fence extends so on the western side for example will go into the Sabi Sands and the Sabi Sands becomes the western boundary and then the Manialeti, then the Timbavati, uh, then the Baluli, Kasseri and going up like that and then you have other reserves such as um, Oh, Lataba Ranch and Makuya further north that are community reserves that are still incorporated in the Kruger. Uh, there's no fence between the Kruger and them and they form the western boundary. Now TD Kid 1, you have brought up something I was about to bring up and uh, that is the fencing is to protect both the residents and the animals. Now it's not it's to stop people. So the fences around the, the, uh, the national parks camps weren't there. But with the campsites um, in the sort of it was 60s and 70s, what they found is that unfortunately the people kept wanting to camp further away from other people and kept making the campsites bigger and bigger. So the fence was put up to actually keep the people in and stop spreading uh, and not to keep animals out of the camps. Farid, you are not allowed to drive off-road in the Kruger if you are visiting the normal camps, etc. However, in the private concessions, uh, they do have off-roading under quite strict rules, which is similar to the Sabi Sands or the Timbavati. And you'll see, you would have seen some pictures now of the Olifants Gorge just before it goes into Mozambique. Absolutely stunning. And, and again, there's some amazing viewpoints where you're able to get out of your car there um, and you can see the animals. And uh, I, I love it, those viewpoints from a photographic point of view, just to sh get some sheer scale of how beautiful that it is. There we go, Kathy, dream vacay, camping in the Kruger. Now, um, if you're not so keen on camping or carrying your camping gear with you, there are companies that will go and set up the camping gear for you. You can also hire a 4x4, uh, which has got all the camping gear in it. A rooftop, tent, knives, forks, pots, pans, plates, every, a fridge, everything you need. And you can hire those in Johannesburg um, or, and drive yourself down to the Kruger and through the Kruger. So there are various different ways to visit some incredibly beautiful wild areas while still remaining affordable. Africa, so I have a wonderful book on the Kruger by R.J. Labaskachny. Um, I haven't read that one yet, but uh, there's some amazing books on Kruger. Stevenson Hamilton's original book is very interesting, just so you can see how things have changed. And uh, there's uh, books by a lady called Kirby Kruger, um, whose husband was a section warden or section ranger and some of the more remote parts of the Kruger and she raised her whole family there and they are absolutely wonderful stories and absolutely hilarious so I would recommend that if you're looking for something to read um, snack attack some of the photos that are really old the black and white ones um, yes there's some from the the 20s and 30s um, the black and white ones of animals are probably mine that I've put in black and white and made look a little bit old Yes, yeah, so that's that like that one that uh, the black and whites of the animals are mine. If you see black and whites of people and cars and camps and gates and fences, um, that would generally be um, uh, from from the historics of Kruger. Now, a lot of you know that Veeam loves big cats, and uh, 
he loves all animals, but Vim has a special affinity for big cats. And in particular, he loves leopards. And he has spent many, many hours camping in the Kruger. And he has a special treat. Now, this is Vim's leopard highlight from the Kruger. I hope you enjoy. Wasn't that absolutely amazing? So different leopards from all over the park. Um, I see people are asking about the one with the limp. It was a female from Tsenze. And Tsenze is sort of, I suppose, above the middle, further north than the middle. Uh, and um, you can see she'd been in a big fight, probably. On, on, the, on the Tropic of Capricorn, there we go, as Verma's is popping in there. And um, she'd been in a big fight, looked like, with another leopard. And that's where she got her injuries from. And we're not sure what happened to her. So very, very cool to have um, a little leopard leopard moment. And uh, it's the one thing we've been uh, been missing a little bit in our 
safaris but uh, hopefully that's going to change soon I did we're hoping to follow a female and some cubs but that is for another another day to explain to that so again guys any questions about Kruger now is your time yeah let's see I think I saw some here um any lucky VM, I've only ever seen one up a tree in the distance. Uh, so Annie, there's some tricks to finding leopards in the Kruger. And uh, if you see people like VM or me there, um, we generally know where they are. So it, 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 you just got to hit the right areas at the right time of the day. And a lot of people, actually I'll give you some Kruger tips uh, from us. And even though we get to drive around in private reserves and off-road, there's still something magical about going camping in the Kruger and we try to do it as often as uh, as we can. It's sort of a mini holiday for us, uh, even though uh, we didn't get to uh, this year or last year, or even though we said we were going to, uh, we just kept too, too busy. And uh, yeah, so we'll definitely have to do it this year. We were actually going to be going on a, a really, we were very excited about that, but unfortunately due to uh, the coronavirus had got cancelled. We were going to be doing a, a film shoot from the northern boundary of Kruger all the way down to the south. Uh, but uh, that unfortunately has been postponed. Um, Applehead Rob, what is my favorite big cat? Oof. All of them. I don't know if I can have a favorite big cat. Uh, I actually I think there's such magical things about all the different cats. So I, I, I wouldn't say I've got a favorite. I do love leopards. And I think for me, tracking leopards is probably my favorite. Uh, lions are just amazing when they're up and moving and hunting. It's just pure raw power. And cheetah is just grace and elegance. So I think I actually like all the big cats. Where's my favorite place in Kruger? Oof, that is such a difficult question. Now, as I said, I lived in Kruger for two years at, at Singita La Bombo. Um, that would have to be up there. Uh, Pafuri. I love the Pafuri, the far northern uh, regions of Kruger. I've been fortunate enough to do some work and spend some time up there uh, along the Livuvu River. And, uh, oh, just so many. For me, generally, and, and you'll find quite a lot, a lot of us, VM, myself, and Tristan, and whatnot, uh, we tend to gravitate towards the north of the park. And that's nothing to do with the part of the south of the park not being beautiful and amazing it's just that the south of the park is quite busy with other tourists uh, so the north of the park uh, from, from sort of Lataba up uh, you you see a far far less people uh, and uh, we tend to sort of gravitate to that and and it's Mapani felt so the sightings are quite a lot harder to come by and and uh, but when you do get good sightings they're just absolutely special um pterodactyl since we've lived there and are resident experts can you or your group go off-road in the kruger no we we are we are we are stuck with the same rules as everyone else um unless we i said we're in the private concessions but no we we we, we don't off-road in the kruger you have to stay to the to the roads and uh, it is very important and I, and the rules are there because most people that visit the Kruger are not experts and would end up driving in the wrong place or getting stuck or pushing animals and again the Kruger is there not only for our enjoyment but it's a very important uh, meta population of a lot of species uh, in terms of breeding and keeping genetic diversity amongst them Michael, um, Fleetwood, how are some leopards so habituated in Kruger if, ve if there's no vehicle off-roading? Well, again, the, a lot of the roads in Kruger are put in places so you can see. So particularly if you go from Skakuza to Lower Sabi, uh, it's along the Sabi River. It, it is absolutely prime leopard territory and habitat. So the leopards are there. The S100 um, from Satara follows on the edge of the 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 Wanetsi River again prime leopard territory so the road zone places where the leopards will see a lot of a lot of people and uh, I think my record is 
eight or nine leopards in, 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 in three nights in Kruger. But then we were specifically looking for leopards. So we were driving the areas uh, along the rivers and that where we thought we would find leopards. Ah, uh, Applehead Rob, is it true that most lions in northern Kruger are mate, man-eaters due to the refugees coming in from Mozambique? So there's actually another very good book on Kruger that if, I'm, I've actually got a copy here, I can't remember who who, who wrote it, um, but it is called The Man-Eaters of Eden, and that is about the lions, not so much in northern Kruger, but the, of the eastern, from north to south, along the eastern boundary of Kruger. And it's probably the largest and longest ongoing case of man-eating by big cats ever in the world. And uh, so what happened is many moons ago, uh, when people sat in Switzerland and made the boundaries of the African countries, it often carved up tribes in two. So a good example of that is the Shanghai and Tsonga people. And uh, they are the, the, the Mozambique South African boundary splits them up. So there's a lot of people who live here who have family in Mozambique. And also, Mozambique underwent civil war for a very long time. And a lot of people would, they used to call it Jump on My Jawsy, was basically jump to Joburg, jump the Kruger Park fence, and move through to Johannesburg and or to South Africa to try find work etc. Now we have a similar problem with the, the Zimbabwean border uh, more so than the Mozambican border. Mozambique's a lot more stable than it was and basically the lions learned. Lions like most mammals have the capacity to learn so in the beginning most of the uh, illegal immigrants would walk during the day and they would be fine and they would camp at night however then uh, under the apartheid regime the South African government put up some quite strict military uh, patrols and stuff along there so the, the the refugees started moving at night and this is when they became proper targets of the lions um, and I've actually seen it firsthand I won't go into details it's quite 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 gruesome um, and I've I, I, what's sit, not citizen arrested but while I lived in Kruger I have taken into custody I suppose and turned over to the park officials uh, Mozambicans trying to cross uh, cross through that uh, Labombo area now, of course, um, with, with, with rhino poaching and what, that stopped quite a lot because um, if you are crossing through there, you're immediately assumed to be a rhino poacher. So there is, it's not so busy at the moment uh, of people crossing from Mozambique. And as I said, Mozambique's a lot more uh, stable. But it's estimated anything from 30 to 100,000 people have possibly been eaten by lions um, attempting to cross from the Mozambique into the Kruger National Park. Um, from the 1960s uh, to modern day. Oh, Farid. What do I think is better, the Kruger or the Maasai Mara? Uh, both. They're completely different ecosystems um, and completely different. It depends what you're looking for. Uh, I find the Kruger, and particularly the northern Kruger, uh, to have more of a wilderness feel to the Mara. But the Mara is spectacular in itself. Uh, with its rolling grasslands and the Kruger's very mixed uh, savanna biomes from the Mopanis in the north to the, the basalts and the, and the mixed knobthorn savanna in the middle down to the sort of low felt thicket uh, which is what the Sabi Sands, the uh, Combritum woodland, the Sabi Sands and, and the southern Kruger is. That is a loaded question Farid. Now, uh, talking about how important the Kruger is as a meta population, since it is a very poignant day today, it is Endangered Species Day. Uh, and the Kruger is home to quite a few endangered species, including some of the largest populations and most important populations of certain endangered species left in the wild in the world. Uh, number one on that list is black rhino. Uh, of course, the largest wild living population of black rhino is still the Kruger National Park. African wild dogs, uh, or painted dogs, painted dog TV, of course, a cheetah, pangolin. Uh, so it is a very, a very important, important place in terms of endangered species. And when I talk about meta populations, that means the populations have incredible genetic diversity. So if there was a disease or a crash, and uh, the Kruger would be a place that you could use to repopulate other areas. Oh, 
Ooh, Apple head. Apple head Rob would like to know, are the, why are the lions in Kruger bigger than that in the Mara? Well, it's one of those contentious debates. I actually had a debate with someone today that they said the Kalahari lions are bigger than Kruger lions and whatnot. Um, generally, the Kruger lions are a bit bigger, uh, not so much bigger as in taller or whatnot, but a, a bit heavier. Um, and there's a lot of different theories theories on it. Um, the most, the thing that makes the most sense is that the Kruger lions hunt on on average bigger prey than than most species or than most other lion populations. One could argue the Botswana lions are also very big and depending they hunt mostly buffalo, giraffe, uh, hippo quite often. Now it's not to say lions in other places won't. Uh, however, they are they seem to focus more on the bigger bigger prey species in southern africa now the mara lions it's quite obvious they get to eat the migration and the migrations of a wildebeest is much easier to catch than a buffalo or a giraffe it's not to say they don't and they do hunt i would say oof, it's such a difficult one i would say they're all almost about the same size and you just get freak individuals who are a bit larger now the one thing that is is a fact that the, the kruger elephants are, are on average the tallest elephants, savannah elephants in Africa. Janet, the cheetah's d genetic diversity is not great, but the b largest genetic diversity within a cheetah population f is the greater Kruger population. Dove, uh, honey badgers are not endangered. Um, they're just mostly nocturnal. Um, they're not poached really at all, uh, and uh, they move can move quite big distances and have large home ranges. That's why they're not seen so often. Okay, let's see, I saw some other stuff here quickly. Okay, so yeah, we've got, we'll take um, a couple more questions. Um, before we're going to move on to some other important news that we're going to be discussing. Um, so, very, very exciting stuff. Um, so, anyone, we're going to take three more Kruger questions and um, hopefully we will be able to show a bit, you a bit more of Kruger once the lockdown's over and we are able to move. Now, of course, Kruger is also home to some of the biggest tuskers in Africa and uh, very big and thick tusks and quite generally quite thick and short in comparison to their Marek and Kenyan and Amboseli cousins and uh, all the crater boo and so why why would you think that the Kruger generally the Kruger tusks are thicker stronger and you will see more elephants with broken tusks in Kruger than you will in the Mara or Amboseli so there's a question for you guys. Have a little ponder quickly while I see if we've got any more questions coming in. So um, it's not to say the Kruger has the biggest tuskers at the moment. Um, I think the biggest tuskers in South Africa currently are probably on average in a small population in Tembe Elephant Park. Let's wait for your guesses to come in. Now, I mean, as I said, we, we love going to Kruger. We camp, uh, and as I said, we're further north the better. And a great place to visit, if you ever do get the chance of going to Kruger, is of course the Lataba Elephant Museum, where you can see some of those incredible tuskers. Janet, yes, there are conservation groups working in Kruger. Uh, a conservation group that is very dear to our heart works quite a lot in Kruger and that is of course Endang the Endangered Wildlife Trust and they've got various different programs operating in Kruger at the moment. Uh, the one that we are obviously closest to is the Wild Dog Program with Grant Beverly so we are very 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 keep a very close eye on what they're up to there. Dov you are spot on uh, why the Kruger taskers generally break their tusks or the Kruger elephants have more broken tusks. The Mara and Amboseli elephants are spoilt. They get to eat grass throughout the year whereas the Kruger ellies use their tusks and wear them down and break them in feeding on trees and branches. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, see, Mars for Do campgrounds have water dump stations um, where one could stay a good time, a long time camping? Yes. Um, showers, and there's even hot water so you don't have to boil your kettle. They've got a hot water dispenser in the campsites. Um, showers, are washing up, um, electricity to the campsite. So you can, if you're in a caravan, quite a lot of people like to travel in caravans. You can plug in, you can... You can, <laughs> and VM says, don't forget the best part. Um, you can access most of the roads in a non four x four. There are four x four trails that you have to book separately, but there are there are tarmac roads and uh, very well maintained gravel roads that you just need a normal car to travel down. Bush baby EWT does indeed. Ooh. Do awesome work. I can hear lions, and those lions are in Pridelands, which is just behind us here. Um, so before I get into uh, our news and what's going on, uh, a, a little bit more what's going on with Painted Dog in the next coming sort of little while, um, we'd like to say a big thank you, of course, to Lead Lenser. For, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to use my Lead Lenser. We haven't been visited by the bush babies of the porcupines tonight, uh, and of course to the, the Steinbach family for the wonderful Travis we enjoy on Blowbunk and of course Ledwood and Kaya on the Reedsprate Game Reserve and our Super Chat sponsors, thank you again, and our, our patrons. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Now, patrons, I know we've been neglecting you a little bit. We've been absolutely flat out, uh, but in the next 48 hours, we will be putting up a link to a Patreon-only chat, so keep a, lo a look out for that. Now, the very exciting news is our app is getting very close to completion and uh, we're gonna be sharing that and hope you share it with all your friends and you can get all your videos and you can have conversations chats um, and there'll be links to all sorts of things and we had a very very productive very long meeting today with the with the with the app developers so that's going to be very very exciting and uh, we can't wait to have you all on the painted dog TV app isn't that amazing uh, and of course we're still working on uh, expanding into into Pridelands at the moment so we've got to put up repeaters and all sorts of stuff and uh, to get that Brooks I know Betty's here uh, Brooks Ellie cam up and running that will be as soon as possible as soon as we can get our repeaters and stuff unfortunately with uh, the COVID we're waiting for some equipment still to arrive from Johannesburg and as uh, soon as we've got all our equipment we'll start with that installation I'm very excited about that um, it's going to be absolutely amazing and uh, patrons you've got to join the next patron chat we've got some very very big news to share with you and that will obviously go out to everyone else not too long but we want to share it with our patrons first uh, it is it is very special now we as i said we've been hard at work and, and we've upgraded a few things so as i say goodbye and thank you again to everyone uh, also don't forget to go check out our teespring i know there's someone said there was having an issue with teespring go have a look brian jubert is creating some amazing uh, new t-shirt designs for us and for those of you who love the Mara there should be a scar face the lion one coming the most famous lion in the world I can't wait to see the magic Brian produces there um, and of course just great to have you all here uh, with us on the Sunday oh, Sunday Friday night we lose track of time and days out here uh, so exciting exciting stuff but we've got a really special little treat for you at the end and that is our new channel trailer uh, or promo video and we'd like to share that with you so bye Live now in the pile of sleeping puppies behind us. We're very excited. Send them out into the wild.
when you're out in the bush and uh, you often can't get things and also when budgets are tight, uh, you make a plan and that's what we've done. We are out dehorning the rhinoceros today.